Right, everybody. Hello. Here is my attacker tier list video going into year nine, season one of Rainbow Six Siege. Just want to quickly say before we get into this video, this is my tier list. You may disagree with it. That's fine. I'm going to give my reason as to where I put every operator, you know, and why. But if this looks different to someone else's tier list or your tier list, that's fine. That's the joy of Siege. Don't go basing your opinion on everyone else's and just, you know, there's not a uniformed way to play this game, okay? So if you disagree, comment why. Let's start a conversation. But here is my attacker tier list. I'm going to have a defensive one coming out as well, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, drop a like on this video if you enjoy, and let's get into this. So let's start off with Sledge. Sledge is an operator who's kind of just been power creeped and... Over time, I don't really have a desire to play him anymore. He's not necessarily bad, but I don't know why I'd choose Sledge over Ram, for example, or choose Sledge over Buck. I just prefer the alternatives, and again, doesn't necessarily mean Sledge is bad, but I don't ever really want to play him. So I don't know if I should put him in B or C because, like, he's not bad at any stretch of the imagination but he's also just not desirable. So I think B tier is good for Sledge. I think a lot of you will probably agree with me there. He's just, you just never really want to bring a Sledge anymore. Where would you guys put Sledge? I feel like he's just a very odd operator these days. I'd still say that Thatcher's S tier just because of how influential he is on the attacking side. Thatcher is so popular and strong and required that they literally had to make a secondary gadget based off of his primary gadget you know that's how strong thatcher truly is and i feel like over time people have kind of just not looked at him the same since he's banned so much and you do have secondary impact emps but i don't think that's made him any worse you know there's a reason why all that stuff exists so i think s tier is still very suitable for thatcher if it wasn't for thatcher and still not for thatcher you wouldn't have secondary impact emps you wouldn't have him being one of the most banned attackers he isn't the most banned anymore we'll get to that in a minute but he's still very high up there so i think s tier for thatcher will always be the case just due to how much he counters and how important he is whether that's him or in this day and age the secondary impact emps twitch is an operator i find kind of weird these days because like her she her gadget's good but I don't understand why the F2 just doesn't have a grip. It, it, it really boggles me that we have this weapon in the game where most people can't use it. And those of us who can use it and in like the pro league level of play, they, they don't opt to use it because she has the 417 DMR, which is much more preferable because it's more accurate. Even though they're better with the F2 than the average player, it's still not a reliable weapon due to its recoil. I get that it has a high fire rate. I get that it's to sort of balance it out. But when she has a better alternative and the average person just doesn't want to use the F2 because of its recoil, it makes Twitch kind of weird in my opinion. So for her gadget, I will probably put her in A or B because, you know, the Twitch drone is good, but you've also got the prevalence of Mute and especially Solace right now. Of course, Solace will be getting a nerf in Season 2 of Year 9 where she can't use her gadget in the prep phase, which is very promising. But this is a Year 9 Season 1 tier list. I think Twitch is good. 417 definitely makes her better. I don't know why they still haven't buffed the F2. Just give her a grip, Ubisoft. Come on. I might put her in B tier for now, but eventually bump her up to A, depending on what the other operators look like. Again, I think the F2 just really makes me see her in a weird position right now. I kind of see her on par with Sledge. It's sort of just like, maybe I'd rather play alternatives, but I'll, I'll change that maybe. We'll see how it goes. Now, this is a year nine season one tier list. So Monty before, I would have probably put him in like B but I actually think he's S tier going in with the brand new shield rework. Uh, if you don't know, he can full sprint with a shield up, bash people on the ground, basically making them a bit vulnerable until you can swing them and shoot them yourself. Especially with Monty, that means you can full sprint, then full extend, then full sprint, then full extend. He's very oppressive now. I think the shield rework is really good, but I also think Monty got the biggest buff out of all the shield operators for this, and I genuinely think he's S tier. He has EMPs, the option of EMPs, or hard breach, so he can fill that role as well. And especially when it comes to just getting control of rooms and keeping it, Monty is like the best at doing that now. If you haven't played the shield changes, this might be a bit hard f like for you to understand because Monty was good before, but now I, I think he just fills a role which he was always meant to fill so much better. 
and I genuinely believe that he is an S-tier operator in Year 9 Season 1. Maybe I'll change my opinion later on in the season, but going into it, definitely how I feel. Ash is probably an A-tier operator. You know, we all know how good Ash is. Great loadout, simple gadget, which is very useful, however. And in a meta where there's a lot of utility, I think Ash does her job fine. I wouldn't be opposed to her getting an extra breaching round. I still think there's so much utility on defense, and operators such as Ash and Sophia getting a bit more utility wouldn't go unappreciated but she's still an a tier operator in her current standing thermite as well is probably another easy a tier there's not really much to say about thermite we all know how he works we all know how good he is he's probably one of the most balanced operators in the game if we're going to be honest he's just great he's not blatantly you know very strong in like s tier he does his job and he does it well you can counter him but you can also majority of the time do it successfully and get that thermite charge off he's uh, another pillar of rainbow six siege and i think a tier fits him pretty fine iq is an operator where i'm kind of jump between b and a because of course her being able to see every single defensive gadget makes a lot of sense it's very strong you've got fenrir you, got, you can track solace when she's using her gadget or warden when he has his glasses active you can even see pulse when he has a scanner out you can see valkyrie cameras a lot of stuff can be countered by iq and she relays this information to the team a lot of people may not think she's that strong, but it's because people cannot underutilize her, in my opinion. So, you know, the more I've explained that, I think A tier is quite nice for her because she's a great operator. To me, A tier is very good and very balanced. Not saying that S tier is unbalanced, but they're just stronger, you know, a tier above. So I'm happy with IQ in A tier. Blitz uh, is probably going to go with C tier for me. Again, this is going with the brand new shield changes. And Blitz, if anything, has actually had a nerf. Monty's definitely had a buff. Blitz has had a nerf because there's a new system called Suppression. So if you as a defender shoot the shield, like the shield operator shield itself, they'll get an effect called Suppression, which means that they can't sprint. They've also added a ringing effect, like a ringing in your ear, like a concussion. So they will also mess with the audio of shield operators as well. Um, so I think Monty, you know, he, he, he can just full extend until that suppression is over and, you know, his teammates help him get control. But Blitz, who relies on close quarter combat and getting up close and personal with those defenders so you can flash him and everything, uh, I actually think has sort of became a bit worse with the shield rework. Again, I love the shield rework, but it's definitely benefited Monty way more than it's benefited Blitz. And I'm interested to see how Blitz continues uh, going forward. So if you guys are watching this and you're not a fan of playing against Blitz and you think Blitz is very annoying to play against, rejoice because he's not going to be as strong going forward. So I think C tier definitely fits Blitz and joining him in C tier is Glaz. I don't think Glaz is bad. I play Glaz all the time. If you ever watch my streams, you'll see me on Glaz pretty frequently, but I'm not going to put him up in the ranks of the other operators purely just because his gadget is just a thermal scope. He doesn't bring a hard breach charge. He doesn't scan all the gadgets on defense. He doesn't have a shield which will full extend or EMPs. It's glass. We all know what he's used for. He's good at what he does, but I would kind of be insulting these other operators if I was going to put him on par or higher than them. I don't think Glass needs any changes. I just think he's a C tier operator. Fuse to me is definitely an A tier operator. If you've seen my videos of me playing Fuse, I really like how his gadget is just great at clearing utility, mixed with if you want breaching charges or hard breach charge, depending on what role you're going to play on the vertical, he can do so much. It's just really good, especially at clearing utility. Like, I think one of my favorite ones is above the breach on Consulate. Now, because you've got Tuberal, Kaid, Mute, Bandit, getting that wall, it can be a bit of a hassle sometimes, but you just take upstairs control with Fuse, Fuse above the breach, and you'll get that wall open in no time. And as well as that, you can then also open the hatch by yourself as well. Just make sure that people are covering your flank. It's quite interesting because you scroll through TikTok and you see like a lot of people saying like Fuse is awful or Fuse is blatantly overpowered. I just think Fuse is a great operator. I love Fuse. I don't think he's either of them. So uh, an A tier operator for me. Buck is another easy S tier operator. He was actually the most played attacker at 
SI 2024, which is absolutely insane, literally at the top pick rate. Because when you break it all down, he is a jack of all trades. He's firstly got his AR, which is strong, or if you want to use a DMR, it isn't as preferable, but you can do that. Then, of course, you have a shotgun, which can also be used as a lethal shotgun. But what it's, of course, mainly used for is soft destruction. So that's another role he fills there. You can then bring the Gon 6, which can be used to clear utilities such as castle barricades, evil eyes, bulletproof cameras, anything you can destroy the Gon 6 with, he has that option as well. And he also can bring secondary hard breach charges, which again is just another string to his bow. There's a reason why he was the most played attacker at SI2024 is because it just takes the pressure off other operators. Because if you've got the buck on the board, you'll be like, okay, well, buck will open up this wall so we get better rotations on our attack, or he can open up the floor to give us angles, and then he can open up the hatch for us. Then he can clear that evil eye or build up of camera, which is watching us. Buck can do all of it. A, a very underrated thing that people forget as well is that if you're going for like a push with Monty, for example, Buck is great at giving him entry points without him having to drop his shield. And, you know, just great operator. Probably the best in, one of the best in Rainbow Six Siege, evidently, which is really nice to see. So Buck is an easy S. Blackbeard, you know, I'll put him, he's, he's an F tier operator. I think that's a pretty lukewarm take. I actually like Blackbeard, but I won't deny that he's an operator, which is like a few people are good on. You have to have good aim and good reaction time to be good with Blackbeard. Because if not, then you're not going to get the usage out of his gadget. That's simply just how it works. It blocks a headshot. If you're not fast at reacting, you getting that headshot blocked isn't going to do much because then that next shot is going to kill you anyway. However, as you may be aware, in year nine, season four, he's getting a full rework anyway with a completely different gadget. We're going to have to wait to see what that is. But in his current state, you know, it's an F tier. I I'm not really, can't, can't really put him any higher, let's be honest. Capital's probably another A tier operator. You know, great gadget, great at clearing locations if you shoot rafters on clubhouse for example easily clear anyone playing there he can bring emps and hard beach as well to fill that role can't even remember if he still has the gone six you might have to correct me on that but you know capital another really strong operator does his job greatly a very fitting operator to be in a tier for me habana is probably in b tier she's great at opening hatches that's mainly all i bring her for you can use her to open breaches at range I'd rather just bring Ace at that point, but Habana can do it as well. But outside of opening hatches, I never really personally play Habana. You can disagree with me there. You may want to place her higher, but I would probably just rather bring Thermite over her. And we'll get into Ace in a second as well. But for maps such as uh, Bank, if it's a bottom floor attack, there's a lot of hatches. Habana is great for that or opening kitchen hatch on clubhouse is very safer to do with habana definitely still has her role as that hard breacher and does stand out over others when it comes to that but in the grand scheme of things i think she's just below thermite another a tier operator is easily jackal again you know great at roam clearing does his job brilliantly i don't think he should be as banned as he is i i think he's a bit of a wasted man don't get me wrong he's great but he's also possible to counter and just don't freak out when you get pinged. I, I think one of the things that makes Jackal so strong is someone will get pinged and they'll be like, oh my god, oh my god, and then they'll just run into Jackal and die. It's like, no, just hold your ground. Uh, half the people who die from getting pinged by Jackal anyway shouldn't be out of sight. You shouldn't have that many people out of sight to get tracked anyway. But when it's actually the roamers, the people who are meant to be out of sight, and you're trying to find them fast and safely, Jackal's very good at it. Moving on over to Ying, she's probably going to be sitting at S tier right now as well. An operator you can use brilliantly in executes, uh, biggest counter being Warden. Of course, Warden does have a high pick rate, but going into this season, he's losing the, his scope, so he's just going to be 1x only, which I feel like is really going to push push away a lot of the, the crutch players, so... You're actually going to get Warden players now who are playing him for his gadget, which is good. So Ying's still going to have that, you know, Warden's still going to counter Ying. But the chance of that happening are probably going to be less now because the people playing Warden are going to be the ones who are ready for a Ying execute. Rather than, by chance, someone's just played Warden for a scope and ends up countering Ying anyway. Sophia is another operator I'd probably just put like on par with Ash and A. I would like to see her get more charges but she's still fine in her current state i've been playing her quite a bit recently especially with the 1x scope and i've been really enjoying her weapon of, of course mixed with her gadget but i've just been really enjoying playing her so if you've kind of fallen off from zofia over the past few years i recommend picking her up again and giving her 
giving her a chance over a few matches because you'll be pleasantly surprised that she's still a very strong operator. All right, if you know me, you know Dokubi is an easy S tier operator. I think Dokubi is literally the best attacker right now. I, I just made a video theorizing on what they're going to do with her change coming in year nine season three. But like what she does is everything. She can roam clear with the sound of the phones. She can knock people off cameras to allow executes to happen, which is insane on its own. If you kill a defender, you can hack their cameras to see their entire feed. You can also bring the Gon 6 to clear utility, and as well as if she has impact EMP nades to become, you know, clear walls and everything. So just like Buck, she fills so many different roles and she does it so well. And especially on PC, which is the primary platform I play on, her DMR is insane. I always see console players saying, yeah, but I don't like Dokubi because her DMR is not great on console. But from a PC perspective, DMRs are like the best guns on PC, in my opinion, because you're just so accurate with them. And having that is so strong. And like, that's why I love Tuberau and Aruni on defense because they have DMRs and I think it's kind of broken, but that's a discussion for another time. Uh, yeah, Dokubi is like my top attacker so far for like the past two years. She's just brilliant insane how good she is finka oh where do i put finka i don't want to annoy people but again this is my opinion for me she's kind of oh i don't know if i want to put her in b or a i feel like it'd be kind of unfair if i put her in b i think she's a i think the fact that she's the only healer on attack definitely does give her a bit more leverage in my opinion if there if we maybe had like another healer which kind of challenged finka a bit and highlighted her weaknesses then maybe she'd be going lower, but her being the only healer definitely bumps her up a tier, and the fact that she can do it with ease, the fact that she can revive people from anywhere on the map, then yeah, A tier is fine. Now personally, Lion is kind of a B tier operator for me. I think his gadget's great, but I also feel like when I actually use it or when I play against it, it's not as impactful as I kind of think it is. Like, of course, you got to time it well, you got to coordinate with people, and a line scan is always going to be a hindrance to the defensive team, but it's never as impactful that I like to think it is, to the point where it's kind of not worth me bringing Lion over some other operators, which is a shame because I really do love him. I, I do love playing Lion. I love his loadout. He has, I think he's got nades now. I think he lost his impact EMPs. And he's not bad at any stretch of the imagination, and his gadget definitely does help. But to me personally, I don't really need him. I I'm fine if my teammates play him, it will always help, but personally, not my top of the mill operator anymore. He used to be, even in his current state, but it's kind of just fallen off for me. Maverick uh, has kind of went up in my ranks. He was B before, kind of A now, just because it's so annoying to open breaches that I found myself just going Maverick constantly and just doing the Maverick trick and getting someone to soft breach the wall because it's getting a bit tiring personally to try and clear mute jammers, bandit batteries, uh, electric claws especially. It, when it, when Kaid is on the board and you've got an electric claw hidden in a corner, you are like, all right, well, maybe send a Twitch drone in. Oh, can't get there because you have a Solace and a mute. And then it just becomes a hassle to clear them. And then on top of that, you've got Tuberal, which is not as strong as he was when he launched. Don't get me wrong, it's not as much of a hindrance. But I'm kind of personally just getting to a stage where I'm kind of getting tired of having to clear all this stuff, which takes so much time and so much effort that I've kind of just said, you know what, I'm just going to start playing Maverick and doing the Maverick trick, which is when you do a line at the top, line at the bottom, it then just completely removes the reinforcement and then it leaves a soft wall. So you have to have someone soft breach that on top of it. But you usually just coordinate, bring a buck, pop that open and then there's the, there's the breach for you. You know, so I'm going to annoy some people here. I'm going to put Gridlock in A and Nomad in B at the same time, just because they are like both flank watch roles. And I'm going to explain myself. I just think Gridlock is better than Nomad. I think you can cover way more flanks. She has a super shorty. She's got impact EMPs. Uh, I actually like the fact that she's slower because you can just take more shots. I'm not one of these people who thinks speed is everything. I'm actually okay with what, uh, what one speed's three armors. I think they're fine. I prefer Gridlock's loadout anyway on top of Nomad. Again, Nomad isn't bad, but I'd rather cover more flanks and bring more stuff like super shorty and EMPs than what I do with Nomad. I don't know. I, I think a lot of people may agree with me that Gridlock is actually better than Nomad, but Nomad for a lot of people is just more simple. And I guess they feel like it's more safe, which I don't think is necessarily true. But from the outsider perspective, it's a bit more blatantly obvious in that sense. So a lot of people will favor Nomad and have favored Nomad for years. But 
I think Gridlock in her current state is really good. I also like the fact that she has nades. I, I, I think nades are still very good. So that's definitely a bonus for me. I personally just prefer Gridlock over Nomad. Now, when it comes to Nook, I'm going to put her in C. Uh, this comes at a point where I have to admit that I was wrong. I didn't think that removing her silent step was going to make her as bad as I now think she is. I was like, oh, well, she still has the ability to hide herself from cameras, which is a massive thing in its own since there's so much intel on defense. But the more I play Nook recently, I'm like, holy shit, like, th this is ass. I think it's because the fact as well that, yeah, okay, I'm hidden from cameras, but I've just hit seven goo mines and I've just hit a Fenrir dread mine and my gadget's done nothing to stop that. So, okay, yeah, I snuck past these cameras and got myself in a, a position where maybe some other operators wouldn't get themselves. But now I'm still at a disadvantage and have to try and rely on gunplay. And at that point, if I have to rely on gunplay, I'll just go another operator who maybe I prefer the loadout and I have a gadget which is going to have more impact. I genuinely think that I either have to just I think they should give Silent Step back to Nook. I really do. I don't I don't think removing it was the call. She is made to be a stealthy operator, and she was being used highly in the higher ranks because she is a stealthy operator, and she's been punished for being a stealthy operator and has fallen off because of it. So either give her her Silent Step back or go back on that rework that you were going to do where she can bypass a bunch of traps. She can still, like, let her still hit Capcan and Legion, for example, but I'm perfectly fine if Nook is able to bypass Fenrir's dread mines, if she's able to bypass proximity alarms or even activate Thorn's razor blooms. I'm fine with her being immune to them because good defense players will still have a goo mine or barbed wire there or someone watching it. So I, I, I think it was a really good direction they were going in when they were testing that with Nook. But then the fact they flat out cancelled it, and then she also got this nerf. It's like, well, what's really the point in me playing Nook now? But hiding from cameras is good, but I think we've seen in defense recently that that's really not going to change much because you're still going to hit about seven traps by the time you get to sight. So Nook just really just isn't worth it, in my opinion. I'm going to put a Maru in C tier as well. She's a, she's a, you know, she has got a, she's got a grappling hook. You can make use out of it flying up hatches, but how often does that actually happen? Most people use her for rushing. Most good people use her for getting control of places fast, which is how I use her and how I think she should be used and is great at it. I love using her on canal, for example. Getting control of gym is extremely good to get very fast, but especially going into this season where repelling has been changed and it's much more fluid and it's much faster, then, again, I don't really see myself playing Amaru that much anymore. Well, you'll know how she works. She's got a grappling hook. It can come in handy, don't get me wrong, but compared to the other attackers, I don't see myself picking her that often. Callie's an operator, which oh, I don't want to put her in C tier, man, but it's, it's just to me, it's the bull action sniper. I love Callie's gadget. She was our first main alternative to Thatcher on attack. This was years and years before, like, secondary impact EMPs were introduced. And then they gave her a bolt action sniper as a primary weapon. I know the SMG secondary is good. I know it's, like, kind of got the same statistics as the F2. But just as an overall operator, I don't like the fact that our main alternative to Thatcher, one of the most banned attackers and influential operators, has a bolt action sniper in a close range combat game. And I'd be fine with that if the sniper actually done anything interesting other than kind of messing me up half the time. You know what I mean? Like I'll shoot an operator in the chest and they go, go at one HP and then they'll slam me. And I'm like, well, I'm not using this gun anymore. Uh, or like, I, I would have been fine with Kali if like, maybe her sniper shots would penetrate uh, deployable shields, for example. If someone's playing on a deployable shield and you shoot it with Kali's sniper, it doesn't necessarily destroy the shield, but it would hit someone on the other side, of course, with a debuff. It wouldn't be the exact same damage. You'd have some fall-off damage by going through that shield. Or, like, the same... It could have done that with Kiba Barriers as well before Azami's nerf, but... Uh, to me, it was just like, give me a reason to want to use a bolt action sniper in a close quarter combat game. And ever since Kali came out, I've never got that reason. I've never once said, I really want a sniper right now in this position because we have one shot headshot. So I can just bring an AR and do something else. So yeah, like her SMG secondary is good, but you're, you're going to run out of ammo eventually and it's not going to be the best at range. So I don't know. Just 
I, I really wish Callie just had a proper weapon because her gadget is amazing. It does so much. It's so useful. But man, I just hate the fact that she has a sniper. Yana to me is an easy A tier operator. She's got an infinite drone. That's basically how you should see her gadget. Uh, I was never really one to hop into the trend of like, woo, nades, oh my god, Ayana, swing everything, woo. That was never me. I always like to use Ayana correctly. I like playing her passively, assisting a teammate, using my hologram to go in, relay the information to my team, and allow them to play off that. That's how I always, always played Ayana. That's how I still play Ayana for the little times I do play her. I kind of want to play her more now that I talk about it. Um, I probably should play her more. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that she's like bad at all. I think a lot of people just stopped playing her because she lost nades because those people weren't playing her correctly. And that's why they had to nerf nades as much as you guys don't want to admit it. It was a necessary change. So uh, the fact that she's got an infinite drone as a gadget, yeah, easy A tier. Ace is probably another S tier operator in my opinion. <sighs> to a lot of people, he's the best hard breacher. Yeah, he doesn't make as big as holes as Thermite, but he also does it from range and he's got a great loadout. And I don't think it's a hot take saying that Ace is the best hard breacher in the game right would a lot of people agree or disagree with me there i don't know maybe but i think you know it's, it's, it's ace do i have to say much about ace i think he's just the best hard breacher zero is probably a tier in my opinion i kind of want to put him close to s but i will bump him down a peg just because i think his gadget's kind of annoying is it just me or it's like the hitbox on his camera is kind of just very clunky like you'll shoot it and it'll stick to the side of a doorway it's very good when it works and like when you drill through you zap stuff and they're great for flank cameras so he's definitely one of my favorite operators but it's also the fact that it knocks him down in my opinion is the fact that you do have to face check with it it's not like you can plant a camera in a site just by driving it in that's not how his cameras work you do have to physically be there and put your guard down so that does definitely knock him down a peg in my opinion and that thing with his whole hitbox is kind of annoying of, of his gadget when you shoot it i'm not a massive fan of that uh, but other than that his argus cameras are great he brings great utility great secondary gadgets uh i definitely think obviously the whole face checking thing does knock him down a peg but you know he's he's, he's a brilliant operator don't get me wrong i know it feels like i'm putting a lot of these operators in a tier but that's just because my a tier list is kind of just the really balanced and great operators which i like to use and flores is another one of them I, I don't really have anything to say here and let's kill two birds with one stone let me put osa in here as well i love playing osa she's one of my most played attackers if not my most played don't think she's an s tier but i love playing her same with flores he's really good great at clearing utility especially azami who is getting nerfed but he is going to be great at that if he brings a dmr that's going to be another uh, counter to Azami because DMRs can now destroy well all weapons can destroy Kiba barriers going into the season um, but Flores definitely is great at it because he brings a DMR which is the best weapon category to destroy Kiba barriers and his drones so it's like a double whammy and again with all that utility clearing on the board Flores is up there for me sense is an easy f tier operator you know I get what they go for with sense but I made a video about this sense has more counters than a standard smoke grenade smoke grenades are more predictable they're more accurate you can bring them on more operators and they can't be countered by impact nades or mute jammers sense can so i really don't see why i'd want to bring sense especially when their gadget covers up sometimes more than you want if i want to cover up a doorway i throw a smoke grenade there it covers the doorway you do that with sense and it will cover the doorway then bounce off of like seven other objects and just cover some other line of sights you didn't even want to be covered so yeah, Sense is just factually a worse smoke grenade. So yeah, easy F tier. Grim is such an interesting operator because at launch, he was like an F or C tier. Now he's like an A or even close to S tier. It depends on how you want to play Grim. Due to the amount of gadgets he has and its ability to pretty much clear entire rooms, I actually think personally right now for me, Grim is an S tier operator. I think he was what, the third most picked attacker at SI 2024. Um, watching SI really highlighted to me how good Grim is and it's reflected in my gameplay and allowed me to understand him greater, especially after his changes. Because if you guys don't know, when he launched, he was pretty ass. His gadget took forever to deploy. You had to face check every angle to do it. Then they started to buff him a little bit. I think they gave him the Bailiff. They uh, reworked his gadget, so it deployed faster, the bees lasted longer, and as well as if they added a bounce option, which means you could bounce it around corners rather than having just to face check every time. And with all this combined means that if you're attacking a site, you can just 
you know, shoot these all over the site and cover so many different key angles. And it's basically just like, well, if they're not in this corner, they're not in this corner, they're not in this corner, they're going to be in this corner or that corner is completely clear. So it's really, it really helps you, especially when you're going for an execute or your teammates are just to clear locations because no one in their right mind is going to walk into the bees. Yes, obviously it doesn't do damage, but it's going to reveal your exact location. And if you have coordinated players, no one is going to do that because they know, okay, if I run in these bees to swing this player, someone else is going to get me from a different angle anyway. It's actually really sad for me to say this, but Brava's actually moved down in my tier list from the last time I'd done one. I love Brava. I still play her all the time. I think she's great at hacking gadgets, but she's just so hard to pull off in this day and age. So I, I made guides on Brava. I say always go for default cameras first. And I still do that. I still stand by that. And she's great at doing that since default cameras have the least protection from the defenders. But then when you try and go for bigger plays with Brava, such as hacking evil eyes or stuff in sight or, you know, Jaeger's ADS, which is going to assist you in a post plan because then they throw an extra cell and the hacked ADS catches it. That's all great in my mind. But then in reality... It's very obvious to see which gadgets are hacked. You can see a hacked ADS from a mile away because of the color of it and the little hacked icon. Defenders easily shoot it. As well as this, her hack takes forever to pull off and is audible, so half the time it isn't even successful. And even if it is, like I said, they hear, oh wait, a gadget just got hacked, go shoot that ADS. Yeah, you're clearing that ADS, but again, why not just take Twitch at that point? It, it, it's faster and she can do more of it. And it really pains me to say this because I love Brava. I love the work they've done with Brava. I love her as an operator, but I kind of want them to change her a little bit. Maybe make the hacking time a bit faster. Maybe make the range especially not infinite, but maybe just a bit further. You know how you can zap stuff from anywhere on the map of Twitch? Before you never used to do that. Years ago, Twitch, you had to be up close and personal. Then they changed it. You can zap it from as far away as you want. Maybe do the same thing as Brava. It's just the fact that you have to get up close and personal with a lot of gadgets which are going to be swarmed by defenders who are going to shoot your drone on top of Mute, Mozzie, and Solace. So, I, I don't know. I feel like Brava is a great operator, but she still hasn't had her time in the spotlight, which she deserves, which is a massive shame in my opinion, because I love her. And I really just want her to get a few more tweaks and just make it easier to hack stuff. Ram is A tier in my opinion. She isn't as broken as people thought she was gonna be when she was first revealed, but she's also still very good at vert play and safe vert play. I know so many lineups now when I'm attacking maps. If they're like basement, I know, oh, well, I'll go Ram. I can easily go to this window, throw my gadget in, instantly activate it, and open up the roof above this location. Doesn't even necessarily mean I'm gonna use that hole, but that creates something called phantom pressure. Even if no one peeks those holes I just made, the defender playing below it is gonna be like, I'm not gonna stand there. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stand in the angle of this either. It's gonna push them around. It's gonna scare them. And again, you don't even have to use those holes. And finally, we have Deimos, and I think he is in A tier. I keep seeing Deimos compared to a lot of operators like Jackal and Dokubi, for example. And yes, he is comparable to that. But I think his strength it lies much more in communication and teamwork than those operators do. Uh, you scan someone with Jackal, for example, and it pings them to the rest of the team, but you do have the trade-off of you having to at least find their footprints. Deimos, as long as they're scanned, can scan anyone on the map. Now, this works best if you're communicating with a teammate. Let's say, for example, they have a Solus roaming, you scan Solus, and it will tell you to the left, only you, it only tells Deimos, but it'll tell you where that Solus is, and you can then relay that information to your team. So I think Deimos is going to be an operator where a lot of people uh, are maybe going to struggle a bit with. They, they're going to use the whole flashy, oh, I have wall hacks and a strong pistol sort of thing. But in an actual team setting, I think he's very strong, and I think he is an A-tier operator. So everyone, that is my official attacking tier list going into year 9 season 1 of Rainbow Six Siege. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of this tier list? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Yeah, be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Drop a like on this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know your thoughts. Have an incredible rest of your day. I love you all. Peace.